Welcome back. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Rear Room Show. And this is the um, final show in the series on the CDs that were given to me by one of my subscribers. And uh, this show, we're going to go over the last two, which are copies of magazines, one that's out of publication and one that's still in publication. We're going to go over those now. So the first one we're going to go over with over with? What the heck does that mean? Sorry about that. <clears throat> is the QST magazine, which is a magazine for amateur radio hobbyists and shortwave listeners. And it's still in publication, so you can uh, go down to your local newsstand and uh, get the latest copy, hard copy. And this is Older issues from 1916 to 1941, and this only cost $5.97 at Amazon. And we're going to show you what's on this CD right now. So here's um, here's what my computer comes up with when I install this CD. It gives me a listing of what's on the CD. Again, for my computer, there's no auto execute on this. CD so it doesn't auto start. You have to manually just start looking at the files which are in a PDF format. And this time I hope to open <laughs> the files using my Foxit free reader because I prefer that instead of Adobe. So here is, and again they include uh, what software you'll need to read these PDF files which is Adobe Reader or uh, which is free, or Fox Reader, which is what I use. So we'll go to, this is all of the, let me open it up wider, this is all the issues contained. And you can see if I go down to the bottom, starts 1916, and it goes through 1941. <clears throat> so this is not all of the issues of, QST that are available on CD. There's other CDs from QST that you can buy, much more expensive. Um, but apparently, either the author of these CDs got the rights to release these, or they're now in the public domain. I don't know which. So let's go ch choose the oldest one, 1960. And I'm going to, since I can see here that my default for this computer is Adobe. Um, Acrobat or Adobe Reader. I'm going to try right clicking and open with and it's my program that I want to use is not even listed. Boy, I tell you. That's what happens when you have a number of computers. Uh, let's see if it shows up here. I know it's on here. Isn't that weird? I do not see Foxit. Oh well, doesn't matter. Uh, let's go on. We'll use Adobe. <clears throat> Again, like all these CDs, it's got this little ad in the beginning. I hate this, but I have to live with it. And this, it looks like it was QST. Yep, it's QST 10 cents back in, what did I say, 1941? Not, excuse me, 19... 1916. Wow. Even got it's got everything. It's got the ads and everything. So this is basically the magazine. You know, as it appeared, and apparently I'm thinking that it has everything, including the ads. Yep, January 1916. And I, uh, I used to have, I used to collect these magazines, and gosh, they just took up so much room. And of course, getting older, they get, kind of became a fire hazard. So I got rid of them. And so to me, this is very valuable to, to have those old issues on CD. Let's go back and try one of the newer issues. So let's scan up here to the top. 
see what the newest issue is in this collection. The newest issue is December 1941. Let's open that up. Whoops, no, I don't want to change the name. Uh, let me try it one more time. There we go. And there's this advertisement. Now, this looks familiar. I guess I don't have any of the, or I didn't have any of the original um, QST magazines, because this is the format that I'm familiar with. And I do, do still have a few of these real old ones. I still have a few of them that I kept. And there's an old Helicrafter. And you can see it, it's, and then one of the things I liked about these old magazines is not only the articles and stuff like that, but the ads, you know, so that if I see on, say, eBay, a particular radio for sale, and I'm not familiar with it, I can look through these old magazines and get some pictures of them, of that particular radio, and possibly a review of that particular radio. So, I, I really like these magazines. So I think these, this one and the next one, are well worth the money, especially if you want to get information from the past. And in this case, 1941 and back. Okay, so that's that one. And you can see there's, there's a PDF file for every year and every month. Now, the other thing that I like about Foxit is, and I don't know why it's not coming up on this particular computer, maybe, because this computer f failed and I had to reinstall stuff, so Foxit might not have gotten reinstalled. But anyway, what's nice about Foxit is that you can tell it to search over a set of PDF files, a whole set of PDF files. Like you could tell it to search every one of these PDF files for a particular subject. And it would go through, and every one of it, go through every one of them, find that particular subject, put it in a list, and then later you could go back and look of all the things it found. I don't know that Adobe Reader um, can do that for the free version. I don't know. So anyway, I digress. So that's the QST 166 issues from 1916 to 1941 for $6. That's a bargain. Okay, now the last one of the five, the one <coughs> that I, I like the most, the QST I like, and this one I like the most, which is, <coughs> excuse me, the 73 magazine, and it appears to be the whole entire collection of uh, the 1773 magazine. Um, so this is contained on four disc. And let me pop out the other one. Make sure I hit the CD button instead of the power button. And I'm going to pick the last volume, volume four, which will have the most recent magazines or issues. And I'll let that boot up. And my computer is scanning it right now. And there it is. Again, it's not self-starting. And apparently there's no um, help files or links to Adobe Reader. This is just the magazines themselves. And it's interesting that they're not in order, but we can fix that. There we go. Okay, let's, I'm going to pick the, uh, well, let's pick 1999. So these are all the 1999 um, issues. It's interesting, it says April 1990, no such issue. Hmm, that's strange. Of course, 
it's happened before where these publishers uh, get behind and have to skip an issue. So anyway, let's pick, uh, say, August 1999. And no, I don't want to change the file name. And here's that stupid ad. Which shows you, you know, that it, they have CDs on other subjects such as sweet tea. <laughs> what the heck? Here it is. 73 Amateur Radio Today. August 1999. This is uh, a scan of the original magazine. Even <laughs> blanked out the person's name that this was sent to. Again, here's the ads. I like that. This And this is in... This, since this is a lower, a lower, a more recent issue of a magazine, it's in color. And there's an ad for MFJ. The MFJ 259B. I have one of those, but it doesn't work right, unfortunately. And then here's the uh, index and the articles. And when this was when this was uh, being published, uh, I really enjoyed reading this magazine. It was a little more generic in that it included articles that weren't absolutely directed to amateur radio operators. More articles on general things on shortwave listing. So that's why I enjoyed this magazine. It was more general. And it, um, where QST provided a lot of information about uh, activities for amateur operators and stuff like that, this uh, kind of supplemented that because they were in competition and provided more general information. Okay. And there's all the ads. That, again, that's what I said I liked about having these old magazines. It's going back to these old ads. So anyway, that's um, that's the CD on the 73 magazine. And I, I can say apparently this is um, all of the issues of 73 magazine, which went out of publication in 2003. So anyway... This is a review of these CDs. Again, I want to thank the gentleman that sent me these CDs for review and uh, so that I could show it to you guys and give you some insight to what's really contained on these because um, they really don't have any preview uh, pages on Amazon like they do for books. So you don't have a real good idea what's in them. Except this one, 73 Magazine, you know it's the 17th. 73 magazine, you just don't know what it looks like, you know, do they, because they used to publish these CDs of magazines, and they would leave out the ads, which to me, that's 50% of the worth of these old magazines. So anyway, if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.